You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Wednesday, the 29th of April, 2015. What are we looking at? I, why, why? Now, you've heard us talk over and over the last several weeks about April being the last of the big months for the big moves. Now, if we go back April, May, March, February, January, December, November, we go back to these six months. Look how clean the crossovers are going up and down, except for this one area here. The rest, look at those clean moves. Even the last move up in April so far. Now, what do we say when we talk about moves during those big six months? Even though they may be up or down, they typically are nice, clean moves. Now, even if we go back to this last year, you can see back during the summer doldrums, uh, things are not too bad that past year. We are in a pre-election year now, and those of you who, like me, love to read the Stock Traders Almanac know that this typically is a big year for the market. So let's continue to follow what goes on. And again, that's the Stock Traders Almanac. I urge everyone listening to have a copy of that. Follow it on a daily basis. Let's talk about what's going on in the market. Two-day chart. We saw a crossover going up on the chart back on the 14th. This is the two-day chart again. That's the MACD right there. This is the derivative oscillator. We can see it moving up. Today it slacked off a little bit. Here is a two-day trend line. We have three good candles moving up. If we revert back to the four-hour chart, it is an interesting thing to look at. Look at what happened today. Now again, we were just looking at a two-day chart. This is what happened today. This is what happened yesterday. What happened with the market? Well, on the four-hour chart, you can see that there was a falling off on the IYY. The total market for today was up 0.20%. We did not have a breach in the two-day trend line. That's what this is right here. But we did have it going pretty low today. We have the derivative oscillator flipping over. We have the MACD flipping over. But again, we have a two-day trend line. We talked yesterday about watching what was going on in the market. This is where we were today. Now, and again, you can, you can see where the market ended up. Here's where it ended up yesterday. Here's what happened today. Do you see that right there? That is what we call a doji. It is a cross. It means lots of indecision. So the market did end up finishing right in here at 106.79. That is the total market. But of course, you can see that it was up 0.2%. Now, let's go back to the two-day chart. Let's switch over to the SPY. And again, we need to redraw our trend line. Occasionally, this stuff will get off a little bit, but we will redraw it. Remember, again, it's always bottom up, and if it's going down, top down. But this is, of course, an up move. We have three good candles there on the two-day chart. We have the crossover back here on the 10th. We have a nice divergence that is between the MACD and looks like it's leveling off maybe just a little bit down today. It's hard to tell. But we can, and that just means the momentum slowing, but we can see again good up moves. Let's revert over to the four hour chart. And again, not a doji, not a cross there, but again, we can see that a very small up move. Now, overall, on the two day, we still have an up move on the chart. We can see, though, that the derivative oscillator is falling off. Accordingly, we have a 0.32% increase in the chart today, but it's getting very close going down again on the smaller chart, the four-hour chart. Still haven't breached our two-day trend line, and we still haven't even crossed over on the MACD. Now, let's go back out to the two-day chart, and let's switch over to my favorite chart, which is, of course, the Q's, which is the... NASDAQ 100, and we need to adjust this to reflect what went on today. Again, we have a decent three connections on a trend line on the two-day chart. 
we again have on the MACD, we have a continued up movement. Nice stair step right there. Crossing over going up on the 20th. Now let's revert back and look at what the four hour, that's the half day chart, is doing. Now this is interesting. We can see that since the 27th, we have had not a great deal of up movement. In fact, none at all. Big, uh, bigger candle today. We see it leveling off. Now again, we see a convergence happening that is coming together of the MACD, not crossed over. We don't have a breach in the two-day trend line, so we will continue. Again, we will continue to watch this and see just what is happening. Again, doesn't make us feel really confident that the move is continuing to go up, but it could just be taking a breather like we saw right in here. Sometimes the market digests and continues to move up. We'll continue to keep an eye on it. Now, I'm really interested to see, as we go back to the two-day chart, where we are in gold. Look at gold. Very interesting. It's pushing through the two-day trend line that we drew back on the 10th, going through the 22nd, and look at what gold is doing on the two-day chart. It is trying to move up. Now, we don't have a crossover yet. We, uh, In fact, we never had a crossover going down, so we have gold continuing on its up move, at least on the two-day chart. We don't have a crossover yet on the derivative oscillator. We do have gold, though, breaching the two-day trend line. Again, look at this. All the way back to the 6th, we still don't have gold going above where the candle closed back on the 6th. We're still uh, well below 116, almost 117. It's attempting to move back up. Let's look at the four-hour chart on gold and see what it's doing. Well, Got a nice movement up over, again, this is the half-day chart. Four of those would be two days. We do see a significant crossing over going up back in the afternoon on the 27th, and we continue to see a pushing up of gold. Does it appear to be trying to make a significant move up? That is where we're going in gold right now. And again, you can see all the way back on the 6th. Still not broken how high that was. What's going to actually happen? Well, again, like we said, gold has never crossed over going down on the two-day chart. So gold is trying to make its move up. Now, once it breaches the 117 marker, so we'll feel much more comfortable that that is a sustained move up in gold but it is trying its best. Hope that you have a great day trading on Wednesday the 29th. This is where the markets ended on Tuesday. Please let us hear from, we hear from you. We always love to hear what your comments and questions are. We'll continue to chart these indexes and gold for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good trading.